Hey there, Commanders. So I'll apologize in advance for this kind of janky way of doing uh, overviews of the gameplay that I've been conducting, but I'm, I'm still having some audio recording issues, and this seems to be the only way that I can make it work. But I wanted to do an overview of the whole week for week one of the Odyssey Alpha, and I found a mission set that actually illustrates this loop perfectly. I recorded about an hour. It's roughly how long it took me to get to the destination, complete the mission, and get back. So I want to go over that real quick, give my thoughts on how the first week as a whole is gone, and uh, hopefully you guys find it somewhat useful. But go ahead and start this playing here. We're not going to do the whole hour. I'm going to be fast forwarding around. So the, the game is doing its best to communicate to you the kinds of risks that you're going to be taking when you go on a different mission, which is something that I appreciate. I took a mission with a threat level 2 because I wanted to try to have some combat encounters. I had previously been taking threat level 0s thinking I could avoid them, but randomly there would be NPCs or there wouldn't be. So I thought for sure I'd be able to get in some combat because I wanted to talk about the combat mechanics a little bit. But that didn't end up happening. Despite taking a threat level 2 and being warned specifically that my combat rank wasn't high enough for this type of mission, there wasn't a soul at the site when I got there. Now, FDEV has given a statement about that bug and that it would be addressed and eventually fixed, so at least it's there's some light at the end of the tunnel on it. I've already been over the Apex Interstellar interaction. While I like the system map upgrades, there's still a bug that will occasionally cause you to get stuck in the Apex menu like happened to me, forcing you to menu log in order to unstick everything and get back in, which kind of breaks gameplay. I'm hoping that gets addressed sometime soon. Then we have the obligatory, you know, 12 or so minute trip to this planet where the mission was going to take place that, thankfully, we can just fast forward through in a matter of seconds. So I land on the surface and I get set up to deal with the kinds of crap that the NPCs like to throw at you. Only, as I mentioned earlier, there aren't any NPCs. They're just an abandoned settlement. However, I rather like the way that the settlements are laid out. I've been, I think I've been over this a little bit before. The uh, interact mechanics here are incredibly immersive. The level of detail at the settlements is really, really high. I appreciate how much effort has obviously gone into laying these things out. The only issue holding these elements back is the Apex Transit bug, which FDEV has said they're going to address, and the NPCs being really inconsistent, which is also hopefully going to get addressed here, I hope, by week two, but I kind of doubt it will. I do want to note here, um, I, I play on controller in the Odyssey Alpha because I'm weird. And I'd noticed that, depending on how you interact with the plasma cutter mechanic, that certain directions work better than others. For example, like, let me get back up here to the panel and I can explain what's going on. So when I pull the arc cutter out, I start running it around this surface panel, and a couple of interesting things begin to happen. So I'm able to sweep across, down, and back extremely easily, but when I try to scroll up, Something fights me, and there's no real clear reason why I could think it would fight me, but I had to disconnect the cutter and then sweep down from the top and it worked. Anytime I try to go upwards on the Xbox controller, whether or not it appears to be clear, the arc cutter doesn't want to do it, and if it lets me go up at all, it's extremely slow. I think this is a bug, and I've had it happen almost every time I've tried to use the arc cutting tool but I can't find any feedback on whether or not there's some mechanic that's supposed to make certain directions more difficult than others, or if there's a recoil pattern that I'm not understanding, but it only seems to happen vertically. Anyway, I'll let me get back to it. All of the interactables with a little bit of trial and error on the commander's part are easy to figure out. This part's pretty, like everyone understands how the reactor works, so I'll just skip ahead. Uh, the terminal is another one that I've talked about in a previous video. I absolutely love this. I only wish that we could bookmark more than one thing at a time or download data like the entry codes to different lockers or terminals. But I appreciate that it does at least capture the locker code for the individual thing that you bookmark if it happens to be secure. And from here I'm going around to the different settlements. 
Um, I do like these external life support units because occasionally the settlement will throw you a situation where you can't physically access the internal life support unit. I don't know how many commanders have noticed, but the external life support unit, if you can successfully cut through this giant panel, which again, here it is, biting me on the vertical, trying to, to cut upwards. When I go back across, it's much faster. But the internal life support unit uh, doesn't require security clearance at all. Interesting. Um, it does expose you to the security, which I guess is the risk you have to take. So, I just go through and loot all the, the stuff in here. Um, I have noticed that there's some interactables that don't have an obvious purpose yet, which I'm hoping gets explained sometime soon. So when I go back in here, that's an environmental control unit, and there's two others. If you're willing to sit through the two and a half or three minutes it takes to actually open them, you get um, a commodity of some kind that you can stick in your storage and take with you that behaves in a similar fashion to a power core, but I haven't seen any missions that involve it yet. Now, there wasn't any combat here, since I didn't get the chance to talk about or to demonstrate it in this video. I will just say that um, on controller, the combat feels clunky as hell. It's not very much fun to try to use ranged weapons because you don't get any aim assist, which is a, an issue that FDEV should probably consider addressing, because if you're doing anything on controller, aim assist is uh, an extremely helpful feature that, uh, that should be there, even if it's only a little bit of aim assist. But in my attempts to use the different longer range rifles that are available in week one, I couldn't hit anything, and it was miserable. But the SMG, the laser SMG in particular, is extremely usable. In some of the clips, if you rewind, you'll see that I have it out in case I did run into any NPCs, but there just weren't any there. So I would pop the shields with the laser SMG, and then I would finish targets with the kinetic handgun that I was carrying, which seems to work pretty well. Uh, well enough, in fact, that I've been able to take on squads of six and even eight NPCs, so long as I have access to an ammo crate and some type of energy terminal. Um, which is why I actually avoided the combat missions, because occasionally it will send you, if you do pure combat, to settlements and outposts that don't have ammo crates or power hookups. Which means that you're stuck to just using what you can carry in your inventory. That's three energy cells and three med packs. And it's no bueno. It sucks. You run out of ammo, and then shortly afterwards you run out of energy cells. And then after that you run out of med kits because you can't keep your suit up. And you just start... It's just not fun. It's not that it is challenging and you need to learn the game mechanics. It's that it's hard. And it doesn't matter how skilled you are, the game tries to run you through a whole bunch of loops that are just kind of chores. They aren't, they aren't enjoyable in their current state. But all it really needs is a balance pass to be fun. And I expect as we go through this alpha that that will eventually be addressed. So if you're holding out um, and waiting to dive into the alpha until some of this gets smoothed out, then you're probably going to want to wait through week two, maybe jump in at week three. But at that point, it might not be worth the 15 extra bucks you have to pay to get alpha access. Anyway, the uh, rest of this video is the taxi ride back, which isn't all that much fun and is pretty bog standard and by the time I got to the penal colony I was I had some stuff come up at home and I had to get up and take care of it so I ended up sitting in a taxi for a little bit but if we subtract that the idle time that I wasn't physically at my computer and able to interact with the game uh, the, then it ended up taking about 50 minutes to get to the destination and back and complete a single mission and that single mission was worth 153,000 credits a pittance compared to what you can earn right now with the ship and everything I don't know how well that's going to end up being balanced long term, but I think that that will probably get some adjustments. I still don't know what you use carbon fiber plating for, but since it's an engineering material and the payout's still pretty good, I was willing to go for it. But um, I'm not very happy with the amount of time it took to complete a single mission. A huge chunk here and a huge chunk here is just travel time. So if we talk about actual like boots on the ground engaging gameplay, there was maybe... 20 minutes in here, maybe 25 of an hour. So best case scenario, a third of all of the time that I spent in this hour was actually having fun and the rest was just a chore or, or a menu area where I couldn't interact with anything and just had to watch the stars roll by. So 
Week two, FDEV's already said they're going to change the starting location and make some other little adjustments, and that they're going to give us the ability to see how far away mission locations are. I think that will be extremely helpful, but I do still wish that they would come back and maybe give super crews some more attention. I think that would be more beneficial in the long term, even if they just slightly tweak acceleration deceleration rates. Because all this did, the making everybody take the taxi, is expose the travel time issue in Super Cruise as a problem that has been in the game for a while and that has needed at least a little bit of attention. I don't know if it needs a complete overhaul. I would like to see the dynamic nature of Super Cruise addressed and improved. I would like to see that mechanic become a deeper and more nuanced thing than it currently is. But I don't have high expectations for that in the immediate future because I think that the, like the rest of the year is going to be support updates and patches to try to stabilize Odyssey. I would, however, like to see FDEV come back and deal with this in the future because I think it's going to be a major sticking point as this new expansion matures and players uh, start to get used to what's currently offered. The little things, the quality of life stuff is going to start to become a bigger and bigger deal. Anyway, uh, that's all I've got for now, so I'll catch you guys later.